Pain does not equal suffering. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is not. Pain and suffering are two very different animals. We will inevitably encounter various pains. When faced with pain, we should not run away, but instead use the right method to deal with it. However, we don't deliberately seek pains. When inevitable pain arises, we should resolve it with the right attitude and method. Question 1. How do we face physical pains? When physical pain such as illness arises, we need to identify the cause, see a doctor and take medicine if necessary. We are not against seeing a doctor or taking medicine, as you may not have the ability to heal yourself without them. Take medicine and see a doctor if needed. When it comes to leg pain during meditation, it may be because your clothing is too tight, which restricts blood flow. Therefore, when meditating, wear loose clothing. Of course, whatever blockage is due to blockage inside, slowly it will become unblocked. Sometimes we are not feeling well, which is because our chi is too weak. When our body hurts, we need to have a right attitude. The first is the simple sensation, pain itself. Simply feel the pain. Second is your resistance to that sensation. Resistance reaction is partly mental and partly physical. The physical part consists of tensing the muscles in and around the painful area. Relax those muscles. Take them one by one and relax each one very thoroughly. Even if it's an instinctive reaction, learn to relax as well. Accept pains without any attachment. For example, when your legs hurt, your mind and then your legs will also tense up, causing even more pain. If you relax your legs, then your mind will be completely relaxed too. Let it be painful and accept the pain with full of joy. You should love it rather than reject it. You should love the pain and completely accept it. Complete acceptance is difficult and may be impossible at the beginning. You may think, how can I accept pains? When you feel pain, you can think, let it hurt more, let it hurt more. It's eliminating my negative karma. It's good. The more it hurts, the better it is, because it shows that your energy channels are opening up and your negative karma is being eliminated. Pain indicates that your energy channels are blocked by karmic obstacles. Once they are open, it shows that you've experienced the karmic result, so the karma is eliminated. How nice. So we should accept pains. The tension in your muscles is quite subtle, so relax your body and then relax your mind. The body and mind are tightly linked. Gradually, your consciousness passes through the barrier of rejection and enters the bottom layer of pure awareness. The rejection is a barrier built by yourself. Dissolve that barrier and separation vanishes. You slow down into that sea of surging sensation and you merge with the pain. You become the pain. You watch its ebb and flow and something surprising happens. It no longer hurts. Suffering is gone. 
Only the pain remains. An experience, nothing more. The me who was being hurt has gone. The result is freedom from pain. Although you still feel pain, you have no me. You no longer regard me as the one who is suffering or being hurt. Because when you feel pain, you may think that you are hurt or feel like I'm dying and become scared, fearing that the pain may be too much to bear. Or you may ask, Teacher, am I sick? It hurts so much and become fearful again. Therefore, this me is always causing trouble, either fearing death or fearing that the pain will torment oneself and causing a lot of anxiety. When we experience pain, we tend to feel fear and worry, and we may rush to see a doctor once the meditation session is over. In fact, sometimes seeing a doctor is just for self-comfort, to seek reassurance from the doctor. That's why doctors are also very important. If a doctor knows nothing about psychology, he may exaggerate the situation, which may increase our fear and worsen our condition. Many people who are not seriously ill end up dying shortly after being frightened by a doctor. This is an incremental process. In the beginning, you can expect to succeed with small pains and be defeated by big ones. Like most of our skills, it grows with practice. The more you practice, the bigger the pain that you can handle. Please understand fully, there's no masochism being advocated here. Some people might say, why should I accept pains? Self-mortification is not the point. Acceptance doesn't mean we are looking for trouble. This is an exercise in awareness, not in sadism. If the pain becomes excruciating, go ahead and move, but move slowly and mindfully. Observe your movements. See how it feels to move. Watch what it does to the pain. Watch the pain diminish. Try not to move too much though. The less you move, the easier it is to remain fully mindful. New meditators sometimes say they have trouble remaining mindful when pain is present. This difficulty stems from a misunderstanding. These students are conceiving mindfulness as something distinct from the experience of pain. It is not. Mindfulness never exists by itself. It always has some object, and one object is as good as another. Pain is a mental state. You can be mindful of pain just as you are mindful of breathing. When we have mindfulness, it doesn't necessarily mean that there is no pain. Just as when we have negative emotions, we can still maintain that mindfulness and awareness. Remember, when mindfulness is present, emotions will gradually diminish with the help of mindfulness. However, if mindfulness is absent, your emotions may become distorted or even enlarged and eventually become unmanageable. Therefore, when experiencing pain or negative emotions, we need to bring up our mindfulness. It's okay, they are fleeting and they will pass. 
When we use mindfulness to eliminate them, they will gradually lose their power. This is what we practice. This sentence is very important. Mindfulness never exists by itself. It always has some object. Pain is a mental state. We can be mindful of pain. This is the key point of tonight's class. We can be mindful of pain as well as any other negative emotions. Don't exaggerate the pain, but maintain an objective awareness and mindfulness, and don't miss any part of it. Don't muddy the pure experience with concepts or pictures or discursive thinking. Keep your awareness right in the present time, right with the pain, so that you won't miss its beginning or its end. Pain not viewed in the clear light of mindfulness gives rise to emotional reactions like fear, anxiety or anger. When pain arises, if you don't have mindfulness, you may have other negative habitual reactions. If it is properly viewed, we have no such reaction. It will be just sensation, just simple energy. In fact, this is just the result of your past negative karma, and once it arises, the karma is eliminated. At this time, you should stay mindful. It doesn't mean that the pain will immediately disappear when mindfulness arises. That's impossible. What works on pain will work on anxiety or chronic depression. You can use it on any unpleasant sensation. This technique is one of life's most useful and generalizable skills. It is patience. Here it says, stay mindful. Stay mindful, no matter how long the pain lasts. Just stay mindful. We often lose patience. After staying mindful for a while, we may start to lose it and think, why is the pain still here? Then fear arises. Am I dying? Am I seriously ill? Dealing with pain is easier because it's simply physical pain and it's easier to be mindful of it. But when you have negative emotions, it's really hard to raise your mindfulness. This is very contradictory because you have positive and negative attitudes simultaneously. You need to have mindfulness, but meanwhile, your negative emotions are still present. However, you can do it. When you have greed, immediately turn on your mindfulness and the greed will disappear. When you have anger, turn on your mindfulness and the anger will weaken or even disappear. This is what practice is all about. Bring up mindfulness, maintain awareness and equanimity. When negative emotions arise, it's because you have lost mindfulness. When you bring it up again, the negative emotions will quickly disappear. Negative emotions actually disappear quickly once mindfulness arises, but physical pain is more difficult. It's hard for physical pain to disappear, but easier to be mindful of it. Since it's the ripened result of the past negative karma, it's not easy to disappear. Okay, 
That's all for today.